This is something that myself and others have called a structural funding shortfall. The overall level of funding provided throughout the system is perpetually and chronically falling short of that which is required to provide uh, services in accordance with the underlying uh, mandate of the public school system. So that creates uh, a whole series of highly counterproductive dynamics within the public school system. I've alluded to the the overall context of cuts and of, of reductions is extremely demoralizing for people within the system. It has placed trustees in what I call a very impossible kind of role. Uh, but on the other side, it's demoralized the public in regards to what is going on with our public schools. What, you know, why can't, why, why do we sit, live in a situation that seems like it's a perpetual war zone? Uh, why can't we have the kind of programs and services that we feel our children deserve? Uh, the demoralization, you know, can take many forms from uh, levels of cynicism or resignation, but it's also produced, I would argue, a flight of people out of the public school system. Uh, those who have perhaps the financial means to afford uh, the purchase of, of privatized alternatives, of which there are many out there. Uh, we also have a funding model which provides financial incentives to a degree to parents to explore and in fact uh, avail themselves of privatized alternatives if they want or if they can afford it. And the demoralization, the perpetual ratcheting down of costs, the elimination of discretionary programming, of creativity on different kinds of levels creates an environment which is uh, continues to uh, increase the attractiveness of those privatized alternatives. And that, in effect, provides another level of undermining of the quality of the public system and undermines the confidence and the morale within that system. It's, already, it's also created, uh, you know, as part of that same overall dynamic, a, a situation of the growth of what I call entrepreneurship within the pub, public school system. Uh, public schools now find themselves uh, increasingly invited to become involved in entrepreneurial activities to generate more money. Uh, they can place additional pressure perhaps on parents to, to pony up additional resources or to be involved in fundraising activities. That's not really entrepreneurship uh, per se, but uh, we've seen a, a rather explosive growth in the uh, in the field of international education, where school districts actively uh, are called upon and in many cases uh, feel, see no alternative other than to go out and market services in the international marketplace to attract students here, to charge very significant tuition fees and to tailor programs in a way in order to solidify that kind of market share. I'm not saying that's all bad. I think it our system probably benefits, and students within it benefit by having exposure to other students from around the globe. But it has created a very uneven playing field. There are the opportunities to exploit those, those um, the possibility of developing those alternatives are very unevenly distributed. And so not every district can benefit from having the kind of international education program which others might be available to, to pursue.